Welcome everybody to Gravity Games Bike Street Vert Dirt. My name is Indictive, and this is apparently one of the worst bike games ever made. And also, I'm cutting up the copyright music because I want my fucking channel taken down from whatever crappy sounds they might have in the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Which, mm. more than half the soundtrack seems to be the same band. Now, mm. by the way, I also got some buddies here. One of them, who you've been requesting for a long time on his channel to do this game as well. Ladies and gentlemen, Blank Tester and Insetic 47 So it's clear it's his channel I've been trying to get him to do. <laughs> yeah. A full <laughs> LP of Gravity yeah. uh -huh. Nobody wants me to do a but, full yeah. LP of this game. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Yeah. I just want to Insetic. confuse all of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Um, I guess... You know it just as much as I do now, even maybe even more since you've actually played this full thing. Whereas yeah. my uh, my serious effort many years ago got to like the third level, and then I just it was so bad I couldn't do enough challenges to unlock anything more. Yeah, and also yeah, I... shout out to the SO Midway boys. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah. Wow. Holy shit. Yeah. I, I do have to ask, I mean, I'm going to ask this now so that we don't have to, you know, cover it again and again. How did you beat this game? With a lot of mental energy. Because <laughs> yeah. there has been no walkthroughs or anybody else doing this game before until I did it. Mm -hmm. okay. So, I had to learn this shit all on my own for the most part. Yeah. I even looked at your videos and I was just like... Fuck, there's still some shit that is just... Mm, yeah, messy. I remember uh, I had streamed this game on a separate occasion where I just unlocked everything and rode through because it unlocked all the maps but did not complete the objectives for you. So yeah. you could pick any map, but you could also see what was needed to do all the objectives. And I remember like some of these maps get so big and large that like you got to collect five things in two minutes kind of standard extreme sports games but you know one of those will be at one end of the map and the other one will be in a hidden area branching off of a hidden area on the very opposite side yeah and also that face i don't know i'm guessing that's the logo of gravity games that weird <laughs> devil face thing it's, oh i thought that was just my expression when trying to play the game Oh, right. yeah, yeah. It was my expression, too, just doing one of these fucking levels, at mm -hmm. least. Right. seriously, this game yeah. made me angry at times. Yeah. So, yeah. Now it's time to get into it. We're going to show off all the characters we currently have and all of their outfits, too. So here's Fuzzy Hole, the first character you get. And everybody gets sort of like a skin change, in a sense, to their last outfit, which is a completely new outfit. Huh. And yeah. here's the thing. Everybody has, like, a regular sort of bio. It gives them their age, their location, some of their history, and all of that. But here we have Dennis McCoy, who, instead of getting a regular bio, just throws a fucking book at you of every single thing he's done. Like, <laughs> I'm going to show all of it, just to show you Someone how stupid this is. a big fan of is. Dennis McCoy. Yeah. It like, was like, hey, guys... Sure, we don't have Matt Hoffman or Dave Mira, but look, we got some, you know, real uh, accomplished professionals here. Yeah, we got like, This DMC, man has dude. done all the tricks. He's done all the flatline. He invented the fucking stratosphere. He is the Jesus of biking. That's why we got him in this game. Are you wow. going to play as yeah. DMC? Not until next part. <laughs> oh my god, are you doing a, a, a different rider each part? Yes, I am. Because I fought... And I'm serious, I thought because the way this game works out is that it was going to be like every other of the old Tony Hawk games where you have to do separate uh, riders in order to harness at the game. But no, even though everyone's progression is separate, you can just do the game as one player and unlock everything. There is no point in being other skaters, which I'm just like, what the fuck's the point of separating the progression then? Hometown England. <laughs> Whoa, I guess you could say England is his city. Oh, yeah. add in little, booing little sound protection. effects right there. Yeah. And here's, yeah. here's Rill Erickson, whose favorite thing is wearing a hat and usually wearing the same clothes. Mm. Until he then wears protection and wears like a yellow helmet. Okay. Yeah, it seems and like the Clay Ramsdale. final outfits are sort of competition outfits. 
You know, yeah. it's well everything uh, else is just kind of like race skins. You know, it's kind of weird. Um and I don't remember exactly on this, so I might be somewhat wrong, but this game has a lot of similarities with the, you know, uh, BMX game for the PlayStation 1, TJ Lavin's Ultimate BMX, which was kind of the loser of the, you know, BMX game lineup there when you compare yeah. to people remembering Matt Hoffman or Dave Mira. <laughs> but I think this pro list is it's not like it goes straight from one game to the other. I feel like I remember some of these names from some of those other games. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, by the way, eventually when you get into these other characters who don't really have a proper bio of age and all of that, they just they're just race skins. They don't even have any protection or pro outfit. Like Ronaldo Merciless here is just going to be different pants. So, after that Chris guy, they just stop giving a shit and just do recolors. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, here's the thing. All the pros have really good stats, while all these optional creative characters have the worst stats. Understandable. So, yeah, like, as you keep going down and down, it just keeps getting worse and worse. Yeah. So it's like, you have no real incentive to ever be anybody except, like, the first two riders. Especially yeah. when they have chicks. Haughty babe. Yeah, I guess they this. thought having a hot chick is all that's necessary to win mm -hmm. people over. They even got the candy man. Okay. Yeah, you know, it is kind of weird when these games have a character lineup of both a bunch of pros and also a bunch of just random fictional, basic, yeah. fictional characters. Like, Aggressive Inline also had a bunch of pro, you know, rollerbladers, and then also put in a bunch of, you know, just fictional, basically yeah. stereotypes, like, because everyone ended up playing as the hot chick with the skirt over there as well, kind of. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. But yeah, eventually it then gets to a point where it's going to be locked characters, which we will see, but we're not going to play as, as there's not that many levels in this game that would let me just play <laughs> as these guys for the most part. I, I've got a question, knowing what's coming up. Uh... How much better would the game have been if they spent less time making, like, 30 characters and spent any of that time making anything else in the game work better? Functional, yeah. Functional, yeah. I would say it would not change much. Okay, right. <laughs> You're right. I assumed anyway, there was competence. There here is are no all competence. the levels we're going to be going through, including mm -hmm. the competitions, like all the refinery, the uh, the museum district, and the museum com competition, which I'm going to be doing both in one part. Uh, the Mount Magma, which is the worst fucking level I've dealt with in the game, and the last three competitions all put together, which is the Gravity Games, Straight for Ender. Mm -hmm. But first, we're doing the Acid Factory. And by the way, you might have noticed that with our first character, our pro, was he had the Mongoose bike, which is a yellow bike. Um, there is a cheat code to apparently unlock all bikes, but that is a completely bullshit cheat code because every pro, and like the first few characters, have only a set bike, but then everybody else gets to choose all the bikes anyway. So it's like... Oh. It's... It's nice. fucking stupid. So, so what kind of uh, things does an acid factory make? I assume acid. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So, first things first, scores, your fucking sick tricks, which is getting a combo, gravity icon, the tape, spell gravity, which is skate letters, uh, and mm -hmm. all the other stuff, like acid barrels, hitting a button, fucking hitting some valves. Opening a gate with an item and shining a whole bunch of lights, which is the first goal that sucks. Yeah, Are you sure, this, uh, the yeah. first goal isn't the first goal that sucks. <laughs> nah, because I mean the score is the scores are the usual thing every game has, but the lights. Mm, oh yeah. man, they're the first thing that really give you the struggles because the lights just suck to yeah. do. Yeah, and there I, are a lot of goals which suck. I know specifically. Why you had a problem with that, because I probably had the same problem, but I guess we'll save that for then. But yeah, yeah, Acid Factory is the most completable level, but that's probably just because 
they took like Neversoft's design strategy of, hey, let's make a medium sized, uh, you know, not super sprawling first level. And note how big this level is. This is their version yeah, of like, like a small, medium sized level. This was yeah. their warehouse. Yeah. And I mean, it's fine. Yeah. It's not great. It's not memorable, but it's fine. I mean, yeah, we talked about. Fun. Yeah. We talked about with. Um, <clears throat> With um, Tyler Lasagna, we talked about would this game, would this game's levels work better if you ported them to something like uh, Thug Pro? Um, because the game's problems aren't mostly with the level design. The level design is fine, I guess. Uh, from uh. you know, there's some variability there. But the big problem with this game is its physics and its tricking and all the core mechanics of the game. You know, yeah. you could put a beautifully designed level into this engine and it would but play like dog shit because the game plays like dog shit. Yeah, like no amount of good level design could save <laughs> a game so poorly designed and so poorly programmed. It really couldn't. Yeah, and well, I mean, if the, thing, if the best the thing you part, can say about a game is that it doesn't glitch out too much, that's really not a good sign. Yeah, but here's the thing: for the most part, with most of these levels, there's not much of a good connection with like a lot of the tricks and stuff. Like this entire area here, your only reason for being here is to get this item. A lot of these jumps here and such are just pointless. And also, yeah. I went through the ground. Yeah. <coughs> and I need training balls apparently. But uh yeah, like this entire area just there's not much point of even being here and there's not many good spots really tricking compared to like the main area. And there's a lot of parts like this mm. in a lot of the levels, especially the competitions. The competitions while they're basic are probably the worst ones to really look for good areas to trick in except for like one or two competitions. Mm. Yeah. It's like all the levels are really not laid out well. And by the way, I well, ended again, by uh, I think game it's points. The the levels might be laid out well, but the goals are not laid out in such a way or chosen in such a way that it matters to go everywhere in the level. Yeah, you know? and also I have three goals left now. Because this is an yeah. easy level to really get goals done in. And I say that with quotation marks easy. Because in yeah. terms of this game, this is the easiest. Yeah. I'll kind of drive the show. <laughs> Sorry, but as Blank Tester pointed out, the main problems with this game are in how it works. Uh, basically, it's physics, it's core fundamentals. This, I would say, is the worst extreme sports game. In fact, uh, this was actually GameSpot's 2002 worst game of the year. And mm. if hopefully this... Uh, kind of semi-scripted tirade uh, emphasizes what I'm wanting to say in that, sure, there are other extreme sports games that aren't great. Sometimes they have bad mechanics or are clunky and don't play as well as you want them to, but you figure out what to do. You either force the game to do what you want or you adapt and determine what you have to do to win. This game does not work like that. This game is oppressive. It's genuinely oppressive. If anyone hasn't played it, they need to play it to truly understand. When you go to do something, the game will never act the same way twice in a row. Uh, every time Zindictive goes up a half pipe, I, as someone who played the game, is not sure that he's going to land. This game somehow messed up going up quarter pipes and coming back down and landing. Uh, I've you you see when you jump the camera does this weird churn that can just completely mess you up. Uh, grinding from yeah, rail to rail works does not too. work, which is why Zin's gonna have a problem with the lights. Um, and also on the rare occasion. Oh, oh, here we go, here we go. I gotta bring this up right now. Yeah. Every time you bail, sometimes the game just automatically bails you on respawn. And because of that, you end up going into a respawn point. The game dictates for every level. Believe it or not, in one level, you can actually end up respawning in an area you're not supposed to have access to yet until you complete a goal prior. Which means that you end up getting stuck there. Ah, oh, the classic <clears throat> respawn softlock. You know, it's I was... It's so 
fucked. I was literally about to say, every so often when you crash, you just teleport somewhere else. <laughs> I was literally about to say that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah. It's, all, it's all certain respawn points every time that glitch happens. It's dumb, and the very fact there is a level where you can actually get stuck in an area because it decided to keep you there on a respawn when you haven't done a goal yet is one of the dumbest fucking things of this game. I think Zindictive probably has played this game more than any other human on the planet. And then <laughs> have, closely yeah. followed by Insetic. Like... Um, Honestly, I have experienced some shit with this fucking game. I do not like this game at all. Mm -hmm. Like, it really is a nightmare to figure out and 100% in. And like, you know what? I right bet there, you I knocked get... out like most of the barrels. I knocked out most of the barrels, but didn't give me the goal. I had to knock out a specific barrel there, and it's only one that has acid in it. The rest of them don't matter. Oh, so they're just cosmetic. Like, yeah. Yeah. You know, as it's... as someone who also gets uh, guests to watch over, you know, pre-recorded footage for their videos, sometimes I'll miss something, you know, when playing a level, or I'll do something stupid, and and the other people just have to chuckle and laugh at that. But don't worry, man. Every time something dumb happens, I'm not. I'm probably not gonna laugh at anything. I'm just gonna nod yeah. understandingly. Mm -hmm. And here because, we go, the lights, because yeah. I, I was going to end up having to do this last anyway, and it really is the worst. The thing that makes it so shitty is actually trying to get the grind or the spot to get to the lights. Because there are two God, ways of doing so it. One, using ramps, which you have to not be in the inside, it has to be at the outside to get these lights. Or two, going up to that you fucking have area so much and speed. then what just... The fuck? I know. And then just like grinding the spots from either this side or the other side. The problem is, you need to like, repeatedly tap the grind button if you're doing the grind mm -hmm. one, because you keep jumping off, and it just mm. keeps fucking you up that way. And it's so awkward and stupid to deal with, and the jumps here are always varied. Sometimes you get the jump you need, sometimes you won't get the jump mm -hmm. you need. It's all fucked, mm -hmm. and it's all random, and all you can rely on for this one, for the most part, is luck. You know, Insetic, you said, uh, early, I mean, I'm, I don't mean to do, everything's in set, I agree with. The, um, when you said that the camera churns, I was like, I was trying to figure out exactly the right way to describe it, and I think, I think what, what the problem seems to be is every time you jump, it's like your character teleports up, and the camera's not expecting it, and then it adjusts, like, two frames later, but, like, on a single jump, that would be okay. Not great, but okay. But it builds up because, like, when you have to do a, a challenge like this and you're moving, you know, you're moving off ramps and you're falling down and going up, every time you change altitude, the camera is catching up to your character. So it causes it to mm -hmm. jitter around like motherfucker. Yeah. But yeah. Every time, every time you, like, it, like, when you were going super fast, that was just so... Like, I don't get Vertigo playing video games. I don't... I like in VR. I don't get seasick or anything like motion sickness, that kind of stuff. This game is one of the exceptions. I get kind of ill to my stomach looking at the camera jittering around like crazy. Yeah. Because yeah. I'm like, my brain is used to cameras that make a little bit of sense, and I can follow <laughs> what the fuck is going on. And <laughs> yeah. this game it's is like, so oh, I'll, okay, I'll keep up. I promise, I'll keep up. And it's like, no, you can't keep up. Stop making promises you can't keep. Yeah. yeah. It's really uh, bad. What what Zin was also running into, aside from variable uh, jump heights, uh, <laughs> uh, what he was also what he was also running into, aside from variable jump heights, is that you have to re-input grind for everything you grind, um, yeah. which doesn't sound like a big deal until these lights where you grind oh, them for a the very short going time to skip for you. There you and go. need to immediately uh, go to the next one. So I remember when I finally like got up onto the lights, I had to hit triangle, like like almost like a rhythm game, hit triangle, jump, grind, jump, grind, jump, grind. I had to abandon all of my understanding and knowledge of other more competent games where you could just hold the grind button and it would, you know, put you on the next one.
I had to yeah. abandon that. I had to figure out, you know, and learn, oh, I have to put in a new input every time and I have to do it fast enough so that, uh, you know, I'm not too late on the next one. Pretty much. It really is a bad thing. And all of this was just the first level of the yeah, fucking game. Yeah. That's the only level I got all the goals on. Starting with the yeah. next level, there were some I could not do. Yeah, and we're going to see just how fucking bad some of these goals really get next time in Gravity Games Bike. See you later, guys.